Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Today I am in the fantastic Cupra Leonor ST tuned by Apt. I'm up here in sunny Wales on one of the most incredible roads ever. Before we start this review, I just want to say a big shout out and thanks to BOTB.com who are sponsoring me. For those of you that don't know, BOTB are the dream car competition company who give away cars like this every single week. They've been around for about 20 years now and given away a total of 30 million pounds worth of cars. For just £1.50, you could actually be owning something like this. And if this particular car doesn't take your fancy, they have about 150 models to choose from, ranging from your hot hatch right up to your supercar. And in fact, this actual week, someone walked away, some lucky bugger walked away with a supercar. Tickets start from just 85 pence, and you could be in with a chance of winning £20,000 worth of cash too. Each car comes with a year's free insurance and a year's servicing. So what's not to like? You just need to be 16 and over to enter the competition. It is a global competition, not just stuck with the UK. I urge you to head over to the link which is in the description below and see if you can win yourself something like this particular car because this is pretty much where my money would go at the moment. It's a fantastic, fantastic big kit. Okay, what is this car <laughs> like? Well, as you might see, I've got a big silly grin on my face because I've absolutely been loving this car. I really, really have. I think it's just fantastic. In fact, let's cut to me having a quick walk around the car and then we'll come back and do some proper driving. The Seat Leon, no, it's the Cupra Leon. Although this one's really confusing because it doesn't have Cupra badging and it's tuned by apt as well. Let's talk about the styling to start with. It looks like it's had some spaces fitted to it. It looks like it's been lowered. It looks like it's been through all of that, but yet it's only just left the factory as it stands. And I think that is really commendable for, for this particular car. The front end is really aggressive. There's some lovely carbon fiber splitters. And I really do like the bronze accents on this car. We've got some really, really nice 19 inch uh, bronze, again, themed alloy wheels that look very lightweight. Behind them, especially on the front, we've got some massive Brembo brakes. Underneath the bonnet, we've got the familiar EA888 uh, engine, which is in cars like the Golf GTI, the Golf R, the Ateca I recently had, the Audi SQ2, Audi S3. It goes on and on. And I know when I did the Ateca, there was a few comments from people going, oh yes, but it was in this car too. Yes, it's in lots and lots and lots of cars, but I'm not going to list them all. But it's a fantastic engine, and in this car with the app tune, it just feels fantastic. But we'll talk more about that once we get on the road. Okay, now we're around the back, and this is this is where the magic happens. This is where it looks really good to me. I think it just the stance of the car. You can see the negative camber on the rear wheels, especially from here. I talked about the grey on the Ateca not really suiting that car, but on this particular car, it just looks fantastic. The badging on the back again is a little bit confusing because. That to me is a Seat badge. So I'm gonna call this a Seat. Uh, underneath it's a Cupra. So anyway, whatever. We've got an R, a discreet R there, and we've got a very discreet ABT over on the left here. And I know there's a lot of badging going on and I like to debadge my cars, but I just think the way they've done it, aside from the confusion of what this is, <laughs> I think the, the really discreet badging on the side is just cool. And this thing is a special car. We've got, again, we've got lovely carbon fiber down the bottom here. We've got a carbon fiber spoiler at the top here. Um, and then we've got the quad pipes, which are all real pipes. I know on some of the earlier Golf Rs, um, only two of them really worked, but on this one, these are genuine exhaust pipes and they just sit really good down there. As we're around the back, let's just open the boot because obviously it's an estate and there's loads of room in there. There's a lovely, false boot floor that you can either have it flat so it sits flush with the 
with the lip here, or you can have it sunk down like I have at the moment, and it just opens up. It's a massive, massive space, and obviously far bigger than your average hatchback. And with the seats down, you've just got loads of room in there. In fact, you could definitely sleep in there if you needed to. Okay, so we're now inside the Leon ST, and I have to say, it's lovely in here. It's very similar to a Golf. It's very similar to the Ateca I was in a couple of weeks ago. There's a few different touches. Again, there's a Sayat badge in front of me instead of a Cooper badge. There's some bronze accents or bronze uh, trim, which is quite cool, I guess. Uh, it does slightly brighten up an otherwise very dark interior. It has carbon inlays in the door, except a bit like the seats. They're not carbon, it's material, but I have to say, it does look pretty good and with the ambient lighting that goes on here at night um, they look really good i do like the doors strangely the seats are really supportive and they feel great these do feel a bit smaller than the ones that were in the Ateca that i did say were the best seats on the planet for a car of under fifty thousand pounds they have got the naf carbon fiber sort of trim on the outside of them but that's just the theme that's going through the cabin but everything else in here we've got alcantara um, on the rim of the steering wheel, which is a really nice touch. I know people either love that or hate it. I've got it on my M2 competition and I love it. And something else to talk about, which Steph ABTV does mention in his video as well, is the fact that they haven't gone crazy with the width of the actual rim, which is just great. It actually feels nice and narrow and therefore gives you a tiny bit more feel of what is an otherwise sort of, you know, electric steering rack that tends to lack feel. So, Fair play and good work uh, for say it, for doing that. Is it a near £40,000 cabin? Well, I don't know. I'm not complaining about it. You've got a nice digital dash and everything in here does its job well. But to me, a bit like when people say, you know, my M2 competition doesn't have a £50,000 interior. I didn't buy that car for the interior. I bought it to drive and I bought it to enjoy. And the same with this. This is an enjoyable, very enjoyable package. It's a very practical package. The one thing that is missing for me is the panoramic roof, just to give you a bit more light on a fairly gray November day like today. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed the walk around. I'm gonna start with the bad points of this car because it's a brilliant car, but I want to start with the bad points because there are some bad points. Driving position, it's not quite right. It, I, I do find that with many Volkswagen and Audis, they're just not quite right. There's something that's not set up quite right, but because this is a DSG only, I don't need to worry about that too much in terms of like where my clutch leg is and how close I need to be to the pedals, but I just can't quite get perfect in terms of driving position but that's probably as much to do with me being six foot four as the car having a bad driving position there are some sketchy plastics in here like there was in the Ateca um, but you know what you really do forget about them very quickly there are going to be people on here and on my Instagram who will bring up things like the plastic or the cabin and stuff like they do with my M2 competition but you know what you really buy this car because it's just such a brilliant driver's car. You don't buy it to complain about the plastics around the cabin. They've got to save money in places um, to enable them to stick things like the RS3 brakes on it, etc., etc. So, yes, the cabin's not perfect, but it's not bad at all. The lack of light in here, just like with the Ateca, I wish this had a pan roof. I know it would add a little bit of weight to the top of the car, but it really does need light in here. And if you're buying one of these, especially as a family car or as a car to take people around who are gonna be sitting in the back, get one with a pan roof because it will just open it up so much. Turning circle, not brilliant in this. I think it's uh, it's limited because of the width of the wheels. It's got the bigger 19 inch wheels. They're 235 tires all around, so it's a square setup in this car, but the turning circle itself is a little bit limited. Um, so yeah, if you rely on a tight turning circle, make sure you test drive one of these first because it's not brilliant. Um, as we talked about the infotainment system, yeah, it's average, but it does the job. Everything in here is you know where it should be i've got a nice digital dash with four different layouts one of which is completely useless uh, but two of which are really good the traditional sort of 
twin dial and the one that I'm running at the moment which is the single dial the speed in the middle it's really really good uh, the other thing that I guess is a slight negative is the badging what is this is it a Sayer is it a Cooper I don't know as I talked about outside the car I don't understand it I don't get the badging and the branding behind it uh, to me it's still a sporty Sayer because Sayer have always made a great lay on and uh, this is another one of those but anyway that is the negatives Let's get into the positives. Let's just drive and get into the positives. So firstly, the ride. This has got an adaptive setup on it and the ride is brilliant. I'm set in individual at the moment, so I get everything ramped up except for the ride, which is just so fluid. It really is. It just tracks, tracks the road so well. I mean, oh, and in turn, because the ride's so good, it means the handling is just fantastic as well. They've done a few tweaks to the handling on this car it's been lowered but more importantly and what you notice from the outside of the car is that all four wheels are cambered in uh, by the way i'm doing 50 miles an hour in a 60 zone just in case there's some jobs worth out there all four wheels are cambered in by about two degrees and you can see it from the outside and that's what i love about this car from the outside out of the box out of the factory this car looks like it has been to say mike from motec because it just looks great it's not crying out for spaces it's not crying out to be lowered it just looks awesome and it's got the negative camber which really gives you a good idea of how this car is set up and what it's set up to do but because of that it doesn't mean that it tram lines i don't seem to get any um, offsets from it being cambered it just seems brilliant all of the time when you stiffen it up in fact on a road like this if i pull it into full cooper mode which is everything stiffened up you notice it straight away it's far more stiffly sprung and i'm sure on a track or something when you really come to push this car that's where it really really come alive but just the handling is just you just don't it, it just unbelievable and the four-wheel drive setup is really good as well. Um, I might have had it in a wet field a couple of days ago, just experimenting. And you can antagonize it to get the back end out. So it's not like a typically bad sort of Haldex push um, setup. You know, I haven't experienced any major understeer, uh, but I haven't been pushing it that hard. I haven't had it out on a circuit. So, you know, you, you just have to take my word for it. that's before we start talking about its looks i think it looks fantastic i really do i think it's got a fantastic stance as i kind of already touched upon it's practicality four big adults a lovely big boot really usable boot it's just it's brilliant yes it's 38 and a half thousand pounds on the road as it is but you've got to remember it is tuned by apt we haven't talked about the engine yet have we well we know the EA888 is a really good, really tunable engine, and I've, I've felt many different guises of it, like ranging from about 200 horsepower in a fairly standard Golf GTI up to you know 300 in a Golf R, but I've not felt any of them as good as this. It's so strong, it is so, so strong. It's strong midway through, it's got loads of torque, but yeah, it's got loads up the top as well. It encourages you to rev to sort of six and a half thousand redline. It's just a brilliant, brilliant engine. But at the same time, you knock it into drive, the whole car relaxes, you knock the damping back into soft, and it becomes a great long distance cruiser. And in fact, on the way up here to Northern Wales, I averaged 32.8 MPG. And yes, there was a little bit of spirited driving in that um, and a lot of traffic, etc. I think that's not too bad at all. It's not one of those cars you get in and watch the fuel gauge literally drop away as you're, as you're enjoying the drive. It's really, really decent and reasonably efficient for the performance that's on tap. I mean, I just love the fact that you can tick a box that gives you a tune by apt and yet you're still fully warranty. That's just fantastic. It really is. And it confuses me as to why companies like Audi or Volkswagen don't offer this 
tuned by apt option because it's just a no-brainer to me. It feels really good and I've had this car for a week now and usually when I've had a hot hatch for a few days a week I'm already thinking about what to change, what could I change, how could it be better, you know, or what would a little chip tune do to it, etc. But this is just, it's a mighty, mighty little engine. I'll just put it in second out of here. The traction, we're on a damp road. The traction is amazing. That was 60 miles an hour, just in case you want to know, Jobsworth. It's brilliant. It's, <laughs> it's, it is just fantastic. It really is. launch control as you saw at the start of the video is violent i think the quoted 0-60 figure of this car is 4.7 seconds but it feels quicker than that and certainly the 0-30 time in this is just ludicrous with the all-wheel drive it just literally launches apparently you can get them specced with cup 2 tires as well which again really says something about this car it's a serious serious bit of kit if you can opt for a set of cup twos anyway guys i'm going to end this video now please remember to check out the botb link in the description below for your chance to win something like this fantastic little car i also want to say a massive shout out and thanks to jim who helped me film this video so a lot of the external stuff that you see in fact all of the external stuff that you see is filmed by him so massive thumbs up Jim thank you very much a link to his Instagram will be below and in fact Jim is in charge of Plas Gwyn which is the house that I started in at the start of this video so if that looks interesting to you please head over to their Instagram link which will be below because it's a fantastic rental property in the top of Wales on the most amazing sort of peninsula bit it's amazing really I can't stress enough thanks a lot for tuning in as always and I will see you then cheers